Good afternoon, everyone. This is Xin. Here is our CE229 Foundation Engineering class. Welcome back. Last week, we have talked about the using alpha and beta method to calculate the skin friction and the end barrier resistance of a driven pile. So this time, we're going to use those two methods to solve a real problem. So let's look at the problem. Assume we have a two stories building to be built on a pile foundation. And the dimensions of the piles are given here. The embedding length is 10 meter, the diameter is 0.5 meter, and uh, the pile is concrete driven pile, and the soil profiles are given here. We have the unit weight 8, 18 kilonewton per cubic meter, the friction angle of the soil is 38, and the undrained strength is 40 kPa. And assume we do not have any ground water table near the pile, and the over consolidation ratio of the soil is 1, and uh, for this design we have a factor of safety is 3, so based on all those given informations, you are required to determine the pile's ultimate capacity Q sub U and the allowable load capacity Q sub A. And also the total weight of this house is given. You need to calculate how many piles for this design. So before we jump into the solution of this design, I'd like to refresh your memory about the load transfer mechanisms. Here is our clay ground. This pile is already being installed in the soil. If we load the pile on top, and as we increase the load, this pile will finally fill and the failure load, Q sub U, is the ultimate capacity of this pile. And uh, of course, we will have a total barrier resistance from the base of the pile. This part is called Q sub B. And also, we will have skin friction component, which contributes the uh, total capacity resistance of this pile. And uh, this part is called uh, Q sub S. Therefore, the total pile resistance is these two parts, the Q sub B plus Q sub S. And how to calculate the fri frictional resistance of the pile? Remember, we have alpha and beta method. For alpha method, it is right here alpha sub u times s sub u times pi dl. Our alpha method is good for clay only, and uh, it's only a short-term load capacity. Alpha sub u is a skin friction factor, and s sub u is the undrained shear strength of the soil. Pi d equals to the parameter of the pile section, and l is the length of the pile. And the beta method is for both short and long-term analysis, and it is for all types of the soils. We have a beta in this equation, and instead of using the undrained shear stress, for beta method, we're using sigma z prime. Sigma z prime is the vertical effective strength along the pile. And those information are given, but how do we determine alpha and beta? Let's look at this from our textbook, Bamboo 2007, table 10.3, give us the alpha and beta values to look up. So look at here, for alpha method, the alpha sub u is dependent on the undrained shear strength of the soil. Alpha soil has a undrained shear strength of 40 kPa, which is right between 25 and 70. This one we can use this equation to calculate alpha sub u. 
and this method is proposed by API in 1984. And for beta method, beta is dependent on the friction angle, the OCR, and the plasticity index. And for our design, we do not have the plasticity index of the soil, so we can only use the first equation to calculate beta, which is proposed by Berlin in 1973. Alright, so our next step is calculate the end barrier resistance of the pile. For alpha method, the Q sub B is end barrier resistance equals to F sub B times A sub B. F sub B is the base resistance, which can be written as N sub C times S sub U sub B. And A sub B is the cross-sectional area of the pile at base. And N sub C is a end barrier resistance factor. And S sub U sub B is the undrained shear strength right at the base of the soil. For beta method, Fb could be written as n sub q times sigma z prime sub b. And n sub q is another n barrier resistance factor, but here we are using sigma z prime sub b, which is the vertical effective strength at the base, not the undrained strength. And similarly, for N sub C and N sub Q, we can look up table 10.4 in our textbook. And for alpha method, N sub C is dependent on the length over diameter ratio of the pile. This method is proposed by Skempton in 1959. Our pile length is 10 meter, diameter is 0.5, so which satisfies this requirement so the N sub C for alpha method is 9 and for beta method we are using Jim Booth's method and N sub Q equals to this equation which is based on friction angle and the Psi P the interface friction angle between the soil and pile so since we know all the parameters equations to calculate the skin friction and the end barrier resistance. Now let's go through the calculation process. First, the alpha method from table 10.3. Using this equation we can get alpha sub u which is 0.83 and put this number in the skin friction equation we can calculate q sub s equal to 521.4 kN and uh, for the end barrier resistance N sub C equals to 9 from table 10.4 we can get 17.7 .7 for the end barrier resistance Q sub B sub, uh, plus Q sub S give us the ultimate capacity of this pile based on alpha method which is 592.1 kN and look at this one, two values here skin friction 520 and barrier resistance only 70 kN this skin friction is much higher than the end barrier resistance and therefore we can conclude our pile is a friction pile most of the contribution are from the skin friction not from the end barrier resistance so now let's look at beta method. First step, calculate beta from table 10.3, which is equal to 1 minus sine phi times tangent phi times square root OCR, which gives you 0.3. And the vertical effective strength, we take the average value along the pile, which is 18 times 10 over 2 give us 90 kPa. You put this number, this number into the skin friction equation, you can get 423.9 kN for the skin friction based on beta method. And from table 10.4, we assume psi p equals to 1, n sub q can be calculated, which is 6.8.
and once again we can get the end battery resistance which is 240.2 kN and the ultimate capacity based on beta method is 664.1 kN and look at this number right here the end battery resistance from beta method 240 but remember for the alpha method we only get 70 kN so this number is much increased compared with the alpha method the reason is right here for beta method we're using the effective strength analysis but for alpha method it's a short term analysis and we're using undrained shear strength because right after we install the pile or we drive the pile into the ground we have generated a large amount of excess pore water pressure the excess pore water pressure will decrease the effective strength but for beta method we're using effective strength analysis for a long term analysis we assume all the excess pore water pressure dissipates out and therefore the effective strength increase and that's why we get a higher value for the end barrier resistance and now let's look at the conclusion for alpha method the ultimate axial capacity for this pile is 592.1 kN for beta method we get a slightly higher value therefore for the control of this design while using the result from alpha method because that's a short term analysis which is right after we driven the pile in the ground and uh, since we know the factor of safety is 3 so we can use this equation Q sub U over factor of safety to get the allowable load capacity of this pile which is 197.4 kN and uh, we know the weight of the house the weight of the house over the weight of the over the Q sub A the allowable load capacity give us the number of piles we need for this design which we need 4 piles to support our building right here so I think that's the end of this class next class we are going to study the group piles and after this class you will have two tasks to do the first one please review chapter 4 on our textbook which is between page number 30 to page number 40 and the second thing is you have homework number 3 to do the problems are 3.1 to 3.3 on page 28 and remember this homework is due on our next meeting so do you have any questions before I finish this class or if you can if you have questions, you can send me email and we can schedule a time and I can help you out. So that's all for today. Thank you.